Hi, let us solve some important questions on equilibrium potential and resting membrane potential. So first question goes like this. A decrease in extracellular concentration of potassium causes which of these? So for solving this, so we need to know about Nernst equation which gives us the equilibrium potential of a particular ion. So it goes like this. Equilibrium potential for a particular ion is equal to minus 61 log concentration of the ion inside divided by concentration of the ion outside. So this is the simplified version uh, where we have solved the, the equation, right? And just by knowing this simplified version, we can get the equilibrium potential for any ion, right? So let us solve for potassium. So how it will go? Minus 61 log concentration of ion inside normally is uh, 140 milli equivalents per liter and concentration of ion outside is 4 milli equivalents per liter. Now it goes like this, a decrease in extracellular concentration of potassium. So that means the denominator we have to decrease. So maybe we can make it 2, right, before it was 4. So before you see this value will come to Mm, 35 and now uh, when the value becomes 2 it will come to 70 isn't it so this by decrease in extracellular concentration of potassium it will get log 70 which obviously will be a higher value compared to log 35 right and what we will get is basically minus 61 log 70 so this will go towards more negative value okay more negative value so that means it is going to lead to hyperpolarization so that is the answer but in this question it also says uh, two different things that is increased excitability and decreased excitability so whenever the resting membrane potential decreases okay which normally is uh, close to the equilibrium potential of uh, potassium whenever it decreases we will get decreased excitability because more potential change is required for the potential to reach to the threshold. So in this case, two answers are there, hyperpolarization and decreased excitability. With the same logic, if there is increase in extracellular concentration of potassium, that is hyperkalemia if it occurs, then the answers would have been depolarization and increased excitability because in that case, so this denominator will increase, okay? Say from 4 it can become 6 right and this value will become less negative and when the potential becomes less negative it is known as depolarization. With this let us move on to the next question. What is the nurse potential for potassium? So in physiological condition we are talking so as I told you that again same you have to put minus 61 log concentration inside by concentration outside and it comes to minus 61 log 35 okay and uh, the answer actually is minus 90 millivolt so nurse potential for potassium is minus 90 millivolt third question chloride concentration outside is 100 moles per liter and inside is 10 moles per liter or we can make it millimoles because in body it is in millimoles right calculate its equilibrium potential so Again, you put what the nurse equation that is equilibrium potential is how much minus 61 log concentration inside by concentration outside. Now, for solving this question, you should remember one thing that actually this equation is simplified for a positive ion. Okay, for a positive ion. When we consider a negative ion, we have to change the signs. Okay. So either the equation will become as plus 61 log concentration inside divided by concentration outside or we can write it as minus 61 log and invert this part. Okay, concentration outside divided by concentration inside. Now I use this equation based on how this divisibility is coming, right? If it is easy to divide inside by outside, Okay, then I use this equation. Otherwise, I can use this equation. So simply what you do is plus 61 log. Here you see inside is how much? Inside is 10 millimoles and outside is 100. Okay, so here, okay, divisibility is uh, okay only, but there might be some questions in which uh, it is difficult to divide, right? So minus 61 log here, what we will do is 100 by 10 
okay outside is 100 so this comes as log 10 log 10 is 1 so answer becomes minus 61 millivolts so that is the equilibrium potential for chloride so i think you should remember this particular concept that for negative ion either you invert the sign here and write the equation or invert this ratio it is up to you fine let's go to the next question RMP is close to equilibrium potential of which ion? Well, you see, when we talk about a Nernst equation, we are talking about equilibrium potential of a single ion. But when we talk about resting membrane potential, actually, many ions contribute to resting membrane potential. And for determining the value of resting membrane potential, we use the GHK equation, that is Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz equation, right? Because uh, this equation includes uh, many ions it includes sodium potassium chloride and it also includes the permeability of the membrane to these ions because the membrane permeability actually changes isn't it so at rest you see that the permeability of the membrane to sodium is almost nil it is zero so this does not contribute to potential on the other hand the permeability of the membrane at rest is much, much higher for potassium due to the presence of leaky potassium channels. So, these uh, potassium channels actually are open at rest and uh, that is why the permeability of uh, membrane to potassium is high and that is the reason that RMP is close to equilibrium potential of potassium ion. So, that is the answer. Okay. Let's quickly move to next question. Genesis of resting membrane potential is due to all except. So, actually, genesis of resting membrane potential, if you see how it occurs, so suppose this is the cell membrane and this is the inside of the cell, and here it is the outside of the cell. Very important for genesis is presence of a non diffusible ion. Okay, so actually in inside of the cell, there is proteins which are negative ions, right? These are non-diffusible ions and do not cross the membrane freely. And because of the presence of this non-diffusible ion, gibbs tonnen equilibrium takes place, leading to unequal distribution of ions on both sides of the membrane. So potassium becomes more inside and chloride becomes more outside. What we classically see in examples of gibbs tonnen equilibrium, right? And this also leads to generation of potential because there is a gradient for ions to move and ions don't move only by the concentration gradient. They also move by means of the electrical gradient. So when the concentration gradient becomes equal to the electrical gradient, then it causes generation of resting membrane potential. So in this, if you see membrane impermeability proteins, yes, it is required for genesis of resting membrane potential, gives down an equilibrium, definitely required. Then sodium potassium pump also has an important role because it maintains the concentration of sodium outside the cell and potassium inside the cell. Plus, it is an electrogenic pump. Sodium potassium is an electrogenic pump because it throws out three sodium ions, right? And brings in two potassium ions. So basically, it is throwing out one sodium ion extra. And this contributes to little bit negativity inside of minus. 4 millivolt. So it also contributes to genesis of resting membrane potential. So answer here is second one, voltage gated potassium channels. Actually, it is the leaky channels which are important for genesis of resting membrane potential, leaky potassium channels. So I hope with this, you will be able to solve the questions on Nernst equation. Very simplified manner, you have to look uh, at it. And also, what are the factors which are important for generation of resting membrane potential? Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Opening.